Hi all you angels out there. This is Calico and this is Beyond the Body. Mm. You know, I feel like um, there's about a, going to be a shift in some of the Beyond the Bodies in the future um, with guests and uh, there's a special uh, Beyond the Body that's coming up with two really special guests you have to just keep turning back in to see who they are. Um, and today, I feel like, um, you know, the past week and a half, there has been a very big clearing for me. Oh, just with really seeing all the various and sundry loose ends of my life and um, how they all fit together perfectly and how the projection called Calico and the life called Calico has been divine, divinely inspired. And <clears throat> I want to share something today. And all I invite all of you to take on that in your life that feels wrong. <laughs> you know, um, my life would be perfect if I had enough money and the right relationship and the perfect house or whatever. But there's usually some big stumbling block. For me, it was um, for closure initially, and then uh, the diagnosis of cancer really kind of pushed me into being a rocket for God, as David Hoffmeister shared in the, uh, one of the Sunday programs. Those big things in our lives can actually be the impetus to really project us into the awakening at a very high speed if we're willing. And I'm going to share a little bit about a willingness today because I really came across a, a lesson in my life um, that really kind of shows this. So I'm going to share first off a quote from David because this kind of says it all about what, we're, what I'm going to be sharing today. This is a quote from David Hoffmeister. The sleeping mind would rather remain tiny and call forth a witness of sickness to prove that is it is right about is its tininess. And I'm going to try and do this again without stuttering. <laughs> the sleeping mind would rather remain tiny and call forth a witness of sickness to prove that it is right about is its tininess. Okay. So, um, God, it was about a week and a half ago. Um, there are a couple parts to this. Um, I follow guidance, and I, I take I take that, you know, usually when I don't see the guidance, it's actually even more important that I follow it. And here in community, we have a gift with um, people when we're confused, others can see clearly. And um, there was some guidance about taking a post down that I had put on Facebook. And I just need to say Facebook is a fabulous tool to awaken with. <laughs> um, and it, it landed, it just landed funny. And I, you know, I, there were these thoughts like, you're wrong, how dare you ask me to remove a post, um, I'm right, you know, those were the, the gist of it. And the reality was I followed the direction and the guidance, took the post down and didn't give it a whole lot of other thought. I just kind of let it go. And then that same day, and the lesson was, um, it can be but me that I crucify. <laughs> How appropriate. Um, later that day, on, on A Course in Miracles group in Facebook, um, there were two posts that flashed through my feed and they hooked me big time. Um, and it was, they had the lesson on the, on the picture. It can be myself that I crucify. And the picture was of a well-oiled female body with big breasts and nipples coming through the very small um, bra that was there. And, you know, I liken these posts to, I'm sure you've all been to a mechanic at one time or another. And in the far back corner of the garage is a very greasy sink. and you know, makes you want to take a shower. And right above the sink is usually a calendar with some of these images on it. So these were two images. As soon as this one man posted one, 
then someone else posted another and said love 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 and I just I was so hooked by it and there were a lot of comments and I just let it I thought no don't go there calico that's not gonna give you there's no cheese leave it alone but this is this is the trick if you can start seeing how those thoughts start looping and this one started looping big time it wouldn't leave me alone I was on to other functions but I'd come back thinking about it and I was just angry it's like man that's just wrong you know and there were several comments from uh, new course students that were saying I'm leaving this group and then you could see that they were no longer a part of the group and, and that even got me more incited it's like oh my god we're posting stuff that's actively you know pushing people away but now here's the trick I could see I was looping with it and it wasn't just going away which is a good thing and everything is for my good everything is for my good and so I went back to it and you know I mentioned Spiri before I kind of do Spiri in my head anymore but Spiri your personal spiritual assistant you can hook up with it online I'll try to remember to put a link here for you um, anyway do a Spiri because it'll actually take whatever content you're looping with and allow you to see the, the turnaround of the gift for you because you're projecting it and I was definitely projecting this and I was definitely hooked by it and I wanted to make it very wrong so I did a Spiri in my head <laughs> and it was um, I hate men <laughs> I just hate men and then um, I kind of had some flashes through my, ex my life, you know, Parables of Calico. And yeah, there was a, uh, there was a great amount of abuse. Um, the last uh, rape was a gang rape in college and I was chained to a toilet seat and um, a male security guard unclipped me there was a woman in the next stall too but they broke they uh, cut the chain and we were taken in separate cars and dropped off at our dorm and I made that mean so much um, because it wasn't long after that I quit school temporarily um, and moved I was living on the East Coast and I moved to Arizona never been to Arizona had no desire to go to Arizona other than I need I, I that's why I picked it I had never been there before and and it was I wanted to go someplace that I'd never ever been before and so I went out there and um, met other angry women <laughs> that had their own abuse issues and uh, and interesting enough I'm currently living in La Casa de Milagros the house of miracles and a group of us angry women in Phoenix got together and started the Center Against Sexual Assault, CASA. <laughs> so I'm now, I've got CASA at both ends, from sexual assault to the House of Miracles. And, um, and, I, and so, again, it wasn't healed. These thoughts weren't healed because I was angry. So as life presented itself and um, <clears throat> about 15 years into I became a lesbian at that time uh, in fact <laughs> all of us that started CASA kind of yeah you look better than most other dateable prospects out there so we all started to you know get sexually active and then 15 years later I was doing a course with Werner Earhart and he asked us all a question and the question was this what lies do you tell about yourself? And one of the lies that I popped up almost immediately was I'm a lesbian. And I thought about that for a long time. It was like, am I a lesbian because I truly love women or am I a lesbian to avoid men? And um, so given that I've seen my life as a game from the get go, I decided to take it on and just date exclusively men to see if there was a difference. So the next 15 years of my life, I dated men. And I've had beautiful relationships with both men and women. It means nothing. You know, it's just part of the whole process that we go through. 
and whether it's with a man or a woman or a man turning to a woman or a woman turning to a man, it doesn't matter. And um, there was a, a turning point that I kind of decided there was no cheese in the relationship. I was, this whole idea of awakening or really coming to God um, wasn't going to be through some relationship. And this is just for me. Everybody's parable is different. Holy Spirit will use whatever. But for me, and it ended, I can tell you the last time I had sex with another human being, was September 11, 2001. Um, the guy I was with had been with for a while and very much in love with him. He was my fantasy. He was my the ultimate fantasy. He was a, a tender, liberal cowboy. <laughs> my kind of guy. And uh, we had a lot in common and we loved each other, or so I thought. So we made love that morning and then we turned the TV on and we saw the trade towers come down. And I think that really moved a lot of people into high gear um, with their awakening program. And it did for me. Um, we went on with our day and then we met up for lunch. And at lunch he shared with me that he was in love with someone else. And it landed very differently this time. I wasn't angry. Um, there was some upset, but nothing major. And I really got, you know, I drove him back to his house to drop him off. And uh, I said exactly what I needed to hear. Exactly what I needed to hear. And as he was getting out of the car, I said, I hope you find that which makes you happy. And I never saw him again, but I, I heard that. And I was like, okay, game on. And um, from there, I, I took a, a decade off and moved into the mountains, and it was really running away from myself. I called it my chop wood, carry water period of time. I, very reclusive, very, it was beautiful. I had a beautiful time. But I really was isolating rather than joining. I, I kind of gave up on the world. And it's like, okay, it's not men, it's not women. You know, people are mean to each other all the time. <laughs> Look what happened with the trade towers. And so there was a resignation that I left the world with. And it was during this time that, the, that I projected cancer on this form. And the cancer was uterine. And I just need to give a, you know, in my days as a chiropractor, I used to keep this little book by my table that I worked on people. And it was Louise Hayes, Heal the Body, Heal Thy Body, I think it is. Little tiny book. And in there it just gave you, um, you know, different organ systems and skin and things that you might have trouble with in form. And it gave the emotional equivalent. And I, I remember uterus is home. It's, you know, it's my home. It's um, my light, my warmth, my, my heater, my nurturer. And so when I projected uterine cancer and had all of it removed, um, <laughs> it's like, you know, it was like, okay, I'm not a woman, I'm not a man. I am just, you know, wanting to find God. And so um, I'm saying all this, and now I'm going to go back and reread this quote from David. The sleeping mind would rather remain tiny and call forth a witness of sickness to prove that it is right about its tininess. Um, and I, if you've watched any of the future sh the previous shows, you saw me deal a lot with my form, just my form, and that seems to have cleared up mostly um, of just feeling too big. You know, I walk in a room, I can't, I can't be undercover, I can't hide, um, I'm just too big. And, um, and this has been kind of an ongoing thing my whole life, you know, if I just lose five pounds, I'd be happy. You know, and this is, we all have these ideas in mind, if only this would take place, I'd be happy. Or if I could do this, in order to lose five pounds, I would be happy. And so my whole life has been spent around, particularly the idea of form, if I could somehow manipulate it into a different form, I would be happy. So during this decade of chopping wood and carrying water and 
seeing a projection of stage four uterine cancer, it got my attention and it was, you know, had a complete hysterectomy and realized, God, what is that about pulling out my uterus, you know, and seeing it as diseased, diseased. And then I kind of put it together with this whole life called Calico, which is really the reason for this program. The sleeping mind would rather remain tiny and call forth a witness of sickness to prove that it is right about its tininess. And it was like, oh my God. So I'll go back to the, the posts in the Cor A Course in Miracles uh, group <clears throat> and seeing these pictures and initially getting very angry at men. You know, men, yeah, this is what they do. <laughs> It's like there are exceptions and I'll just try and stick with the exceptions and ignore the others. But you see, and, and this all leads into me being asked to take a post down. So the one thing, I didn't get engaged in the comments on it, but I did send a note to the, the um, administrators of the group saying, yeah, maybe you should take this down. There are newbies leaving, you know, it's kind of causing some upset. And then I thought about being asked to take my post down, and it's like everything is for my good. Everything, everything is for my good. And so it's okay. So this is for my good. Having, being asked to take a post down and seeing a post that hooked me. So I did a little spear in head. Okay, so I hate men. One of the turnarounds of that is I hate women. And I thought about it and I thought, well, I have from time to time, yeah. And then that immediately opened up into this, I hate me. And it was like, oh my God. And you have to understand, this was a very emotional thing. Tears will come up, but it's not like getting stuck in an upset. It's like really moving through it. You've brought the, the situation to the light to see it differently with Holy Spirit through the eyes of God, and God just loves. So when I got to this point of really seeing I hate me, <laughs> I quite frankly was laughing at this point because it's like, wow, how's that working for you, Calico? <laughs> it seems like that's um, kind of a hard one to um, work through if you don't love yourself. And then just seeing how it all put together, it's like, well, I've been killing myself off from the first diet I ever put myself on to lose five pounds. I've been killing myself off. I've wanted myself to be different. And uh, it really wasn't until I was able to really get to this core belief of I hate me and always have. And I've never been good enough and I never will be good enough. And, and I said on the last program, the laws of chaos um, that unless you're willing to see things differently, the laws of chaos are constantly going to be playing and making, having an effect on your life, and um, which has certainly been my entire life. So I just share this with you to kind of see if there is something up for you, maybe Maybe this is your opportunity to take it on and see it differently with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit only loves. God only loves. Nothing else. And if I'm making something wrong, if I am making something wrong, and I know that God only loves, then I've either got to kill God off or kill me off. And that's what this whole thing with cancer has been about. It's like time to kill you off because obviously this is just too much for me to, to make peace with. And the reality is, and I really am so grateful for being in community because I've got so many mighty companions that can see me as love when I can't. And um, it's a huge gift, huge gift. So with that, I just want to say, in last, yesterday I had the beautiful gift of joining with, um, and I'm seeing there's a lot of light coming through here, oh well. It is what it is. It's <laughs> we're working on the technology and the lighting and the, all that. Um, 
Anyway, I, we're working on, and I'm not going to give out a whole lot because I'm saving that for a program. I'm going to have these two people come on a show and we can, we can introduce it then. But there's something really wonderful that's going to happen through um, Living Miracles and I'm going to be a part of it and I'm, I have been a part of it and I'm very excited. And so all of you that are struggling out there, particularly those that think they're sick, Oh, this one's going to be for you. So you have to tune in. I, I think the next couple of shows may be addressing, oh, hard to say what's, but food and food-related uh, dysfunction um, as it relates to hating the body. And, uh, and we'll see how it all plays out. But there's, I'm very excited about some of the direction that we're, we're, we'll be moving into um, with Beyond the Body and... Um, health and healing and how we relate to the body and all of that. So for now, I just want you to know that you are loved. I mean, if there was one thing to take away from this show, know you're loved. And if that causes conflict in you in any way, take that to Spiri to see it differently. Because the truth is, we are nothing but love. We just forgot. And I'm grateful to the, the two men that posted those shots um, because it really dragged up a lot of beliefs for me that were ready to be healed. And um, yeah, so that's always a good thing. And everything is for my good. Everything is for my good. So um, yeah, with that, I just need to say I love you all. And I hope that you can find the love you are in this moment so bye for now everybody have a great moment and uh, until the next episode of beyond the body be joyous find something to laugh at even if it's just yourself <laughs> bye all love you because I love me Just a tiny mad idea At which the son of God